there's now a much greater opportunity for photographic images to be used in a much more explicit and a much more reflexive articulation of an idea, of a point of view, rather than only claim uh, to represent reality. So I think what is called for and what this exhibition seeks to kind of test is the formulation of a photographic discourse that frames the photograph as a vehicle for debate, as discursive documents. So I've invited six artists who use photography and paired them around three broad themes to test the curatorial framework and to facilitate and promote discussion and debate. Hello, I'm Richard Mulhern. Uh, I'm a photographer as part of this show here at Huddersfield Art Gallery, uh, Discursive Documents. The work that I've made for the show, which you can see behind you, is, uh, is, is uh, my current practice from a PhD, and it is, I'm particularly interested in uh, in person, place, and event. My name is Richard Higginbottom, a uh, photographer based in Manchester, and this project is about an exploration of this city. So the work was made around Manchester um, and London as well, but Manchester City Centre is the main location for the work being made. Um, it's an exploration of the way that people use the city and the way that people operate and function within the city, but it's also my response to um, the city itself. So it's my own kind of exploration and my own look and view of the city. So turning my camera to things that interest me, essentially. I am Alex Belda, and uh, this is my ASMA project for the Discursive Documents exhibition. Uh, I started the whole project around a year ago in Salzburg, in Austria. Uh, and I was trying to understand the situation of uh, refugees here in, uh, in Europe, but also to understand the reasons why they leave their countries and they try to come to Europe, uh, which for them is a, obviously a safer place. Uh, the whole, uh, whole project is sort of a collaboration between me and them, and uh, if you have a look at the work, you see a great input from them. Uh, there are testimonies in the video, there are photographs that they took on their cameras and on their phones uh, back home during their journey and also uh, well, in Austria. I'm Seba Curtis, a photographer from Argentina and uh, I live and work in Manchester and for the last 10 years I've been working with the refugees and immigration crisis and uh, the work came up alive for the personal experience as a, as a legal immigrant for many years in Europe and you can see here in the Huddersfield Art Gallery some of the work is done in Normandy and the Adriatic Ocean. Hello, I'm Leila Saylor um, and I'm going to talk about my piece Dolores uh, that I created for discursive documents. Um, the piece is um, videos and GIFs um, created of um, a sex doll that I found in a vending machine. My name is Sarah Eyre and my piece is called Lady Lane and it comprises of a series of photographs or collages and a GIF. And it's work in progress so I'm still in the process of working through ideas. I call my images photographs but collage is an important method I use to make the work. And I use a mixture of my own images and found images from glossy magazines and I dissect and rearrange material to make new pieces. So one of the discussions I'd like to have at the event is around the idea of the cut, photography and the body. A cut can separate things and it can bring things together to make new forms. So I'm questioning what possibilities or new forms relating to gender and sexuality may be suggested through my fragmentation and reconfiguration of the female form. Photographs are also now circulated around the globe at a pretty much unquantifiable pace and quantity. And so our understanding of photography has expanded beyond all recognition. A lot of the critiques of photography, especially from the 1970s, really kind of attacked the photograph's ability to record reality. It sort of challenged its, its authority to speak truthfully, which I think was very useful. Having said that, you, can, you should understand, I think, that photographs still operate pretty much, for the majority of the time, as visual documents. And so they're immensely important in structuring how we understand the world, how we see the world. You know, what is seeable? What's invisible? What's not photographed? What's not photographable? What's sayable? What's audible? 
And that's intensely powerful, that's political. The exhibition is not seeking to redefine genres of photographic practice as either art or documentary, as I believe the search for rigid definitions for photographic discourse is politically unwise and philosophically doomed to failure. The history of photography is old enough to have gone through a multitude of transformations, both technically and culturally, that illustrates photography's endless mutability and utility. So the exhibition then is a tentative statement of belief in the photograph's potential to engender debate. Not as to how things are, but to what is possible. The video is one guy, Mohammed, speaking on the bridge in Salzburg, and he's actually telling us how uh, an Islamic group uh, took over his city in, uh, in Syria. And he was explaining how they took over the oil company that he used to work for, and that's why he had to, had to leave Syria. And he actually showed me a video on YouTube, it was this group's YouTube channel. And they actually uploaded a video after they took over the, the company. So it's very interesting how well, everybody in uh, this context uses internet and social media. Uh, the governments, the people, the refugees, and these, these groups as well. But then, when the phones came and they came available, because internet was available, but not for everyone, yeah. the phone, the public. Mm -hmm. So when it came available a few years ago, like the guys, I mean like any of those guys has more power than any uh, traditional documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just, you can see a bomb coming to Syria two minutes after it happens in YouTube. Yeah. And, and I think the media has to deal with that at some point and say, all right, man, we can hide this anymore, we, it's, this is happening, everyone knows it, it's in Facebook, it's in Twitter. So I think it changed the dynamic of immigration, that specific moment when the internet was available in the photos of the phone. So I think it's a, it's a great approach that you're actually showing pictures that they took with the phones. I mean, I always tend to think of the photograph as an inherently kind of unruly document. They can't, they can't hold, they can't hold it to any particular task. It constantly slips out of your grasp and it becomes a million different things. We've got to be careful about victimising these people because yes. they might not see themselves like that and neither should be in, in, in some aspects of what they're doing. In fact, he shows them as quite um, heroic figures almost. I mean, if we look at most of these portraits here, they are looking direct into the camera. And I think it's, it's a different way of telling the story. And because a photographer can't always tell that story, it sometimes needs another layer. And Alex has done this in his work of, um, of using the images of the immigrants themselves. And I think of what Seb was saying there about uh, the use of the shopping bags. So uh, we all get what's going on in these images, right? And without, I, I mean, I don't like to talk about uh, the process too much, that, that sort of fear of killing the magic of it, but I think this is really important in Seb's work and it, and it creates this almost like a surreal lens uh, through the carrier bag. What right does a photographer have to turn up and record somebody else's life and talk about them? This is them, and I'm using the truth machine to tell you what, who they are. And of course, that's been a common critique of photographic practice. One of the ways that we've kind of engaged with it is to, you know, some particular practitioners, is to work with, speak with. So, uh, and I actually, and I think I, I've linked that strongly in years. You did both of them, but really for yourself, Alex. That's what I, I see in this. And there's a quote for me from a Nicaraguan peasant <laughs> in 1975 that I found, I just really love. And it says, with lies, they tried to make us lie. As if they did not know that the mouth was made to say and the eyes to see. But the idea that there's a, a kind of a, it's a, a paradox, you know, having magic and real. In, in the same sentence, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, it's, I don't know if people are familiar with the literary term, magic realism. No, it's, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's become, it's, it's actually, it, it emerged, yeah. Uh, it emerged, actually, it began in Germany, in all places, in the 20s, for a new form of art yeah. called New Objectivity. And it was an artist's response to uh, the second, first world war, the trauma of the first world war, and they just went, we can't be romantic and 
anymore about lovely ideas. We just have to be r real about the shit that's happening because there's, you know, ha half the male population's walking around with half a leg and, you know, big scars and, you know, millions of people just being killed. Being magic and real at the same time, that it, 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 it's perfectly suited for crossing boundaries. Mm -hmm. We're looking back this notion of, of refugee status. The work will help you cross boundaries of what you think you know or what you think you see. Uh, and I think that's key because it doesn't tell you anything, but it asks you to think about it.